Okay, so I'm going to list the identities that we use along the way just to, to make things pretty clear. Secant is 1 over cosine. I'm not sure what that means in the chat, but maybe you can you can explain it if you need to. Otherwise, we can keep going. Um, <laughs> and then cosecant is one over sine. Um, so I, I write these down because I see these here in the denominators. So let's let's maybe actually let's think about this in a. Let's do it this way. See, there's multiple ways to do this. Here's a different way that it just popped into my brain. Maybe it was the first thing that you thought. What about 1 over secant of x? And what about 1 over cosecant of x? Because that's what we have here. So 1 divided by cosecant times sine, and 1 divided by secant times sine, or cosine there. So this one is cosine, and this one is sine. So here, there's two alternative ways to do this. You're seeing that right away. So what we see here is this is cosine from the identity of this times what's left over is the cosine plus this, which is sine, times what's left over, which is sine. That's obviously cosine squared plus sine squared. And that, we obviously know the uh, is a Pythagorean identity. That's always one. So our target was not too far away in this problem. So what we just did is verified that this is always equal to 1. Cosine over secant plus sine over cosecant is always 1. Okay, We started with the left-hand side and we worked our way to the right-hand side. If you're of another persuasion, you could start at the right-hand side, 1. <laughs> and try to make your way to the other side. That's totally fine. Okay, this is how you verify identities. Um, let me let me show you one sort of advanced technique. Um, I don't know if you could call it that. Uh, pro tip, these are uh, very catchy phrases. When things aren't so obvious. So this is another fractional one. This is 77. The number's really big, so you know it's a hard problem. So it's 1 minus cosine of the angle divided by sine of the angle. They want us to show that this is equal to... So this, this is a big question mark right here. We don't know this. Okay. They want us to show that this is equal to sine of the angle over 1 minus, or sorry, 1 plus cosine of the angle. Right away, this is not obvious, right? I, I don't see this as being obvious, at least. Maybe you do. I definitely don't. The method that I just suggested was pick a side so you can choose the left side, or you can choose the right side. And you're going to try and use your known identities to work it, sort of mold it, into the other side. When there's a problem like this where it's not obvious which side you should pick, um, you, can, you can do this thing where pick one side and say you get stuck. 
So like I pick this left side and I'm like, I have no idea what to do. Maybe, maybe I'm just gonna break this into fractions. One over sine of x minus cosine x over sine x. That's a, that's a legal move, that's fine. But this doesn't look any closer to this. Right, it doesn't. So you don't know where to go from here. You're like, I don't know. Another thing you can do then at that point is you can go to the other side and try and rewrite it in a different way as well. Okay, you can't assume there's an equality between what you do down here and what you do up here, but if we can get to some point in the middle here where a rewritten portion of the bottom is exactly the same as a rewritten portion of the top, then we definitely have an identity between them. Okay, so let's see if we can solve this one. Um, I'm going to although this may seem like a bad idea, it might be. Let's multiply the top and bottom of this bottom guy by, what do you think? Um, one minus cosine squared, or one minus cosine. I noticed there's a one minus cosine up here, so I'm, I'm thinking to myself, there's gonna be something like that. So let's multiply the top and bottom by this. Okay. And that gives me something that looks like this, right? It's sine times one minus cosine x divided by 1 minus cosine squared of x, right? Okay, now at this point I can see the solution popping out, but I can tell that this separation by the fractions was not the correct thing for this solution to do. So. This, this just illustrates my point more. Starting on one side is not always the best, right? You might work on it for a little while and you might get nowhere. Switch sides and start working it, okay? And eventually you're gonna arrive at things that are close enough together that you'll start seeing things like, hey, maybe I just try this step and it'll turn it into this, this one that I turned it into up here. Or maybe you'll see right away it's not too far off from where you are or where you want it to be. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm actually not gonna erase this. I'm gonna move it over to the side. Um, because I have the ability to do that. I know this is equal to that, but I'm gonna hold off on that. So how about this? Can we simplify this at all? What do you think? So if, we, if we're looking at this fraction, can we rewrite this to simplify it somehow? Specifically, I'll push you a little bit more. The denominator can be rewritten in a simpler way using one of the identities. Can you reduce the square? Mm. Using a double angle identity, you could, and that might be helpful. Oops, I forgot my angle there. It might be helpful. There might be a solution there. I, I don't want to squash that idea. <laughs> you might find a solution using that. Um, I think I see a different way here and that's not what I was thinking. 
what I was thinking was to use the Pythagorean identity here on the bottom. If we know sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, then what do we know about 1 minus cosine squared of x? If we just rewrite this, we can find that 1 minus cosine squared is just sine squared of x. You with me on that one? Maybe that's even what you meant. I don't know. Part of this whole class is learning the language. So maybe that's what you meant when you said that in the chat. Maybe not. I don't know. But there could be something to uh, reducing the square down to a linear term of cosine. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, from here, there's just one step left. Right? We just cancel one of those signs on top with one of those signs on bottom. And we've got it. OK, so this illustrated the point quite well that uh, this illustrated the point quite well that if you've got a problem where you don't really you don't necessarily see the solution on one side or the other, switching to the other side and just working again <laughs> that can that can be helpful um, uh, and it can give you clues as to what you should do okay so that was that pro tip or the advanced technique another big tip which this always frustrated me when I was early in my math career was where did this come from <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why did I, why in the world did I suggest multiplying by that of all things? Yes, it's equal to one. Yes. But that is not the one that usually people think of. So why in the world did I pick that? It's because of the form of what I was trying to get to. So I saw up top, I saw this 1 minus cosine x. There's nothing like that here, is there? This is where I was starting. That's where I was going. So I needed to introduce that. The way to introduce new elements of form, so introduce this new 1 minus cosine of x, is to multiply by 1, specifically a 1 in that form. Okay, that that frustrated me so much towards the beginning of my mathematics, because it was like, how can I, how could I ever think of that on my own? You, you get used to it. You you sort of, you know, I don't know if you're in engineering or programming or or even in art. You know, if you have something to look at, and you say this is what I want to create. And then you look at your tools. You look at what you've got in front of you. Um, having that thing that you're looking at sort of gives you hints and tips as to which tools you're going to use and how you should use them. Okay, so I saw that 1 minus cosine x, so let me introduce it using some of the tools that I have, which are multiplication by 1. So enough of that. Questions on this one? If not, we'll move on. We've got time for one more. Okay, let's move on to the next section. I, I did not do many problems from the next section today because it introduces like really two more things, two new identities uh, that are worthwhile. And they are these sine of an angle plus another angle and cosine 
of an angle plus a different angle. So there's two identities. These are called the sum and difference identities. Uh, there's a third one which is used less often in my work. So tangent of a plus b is less commonly used. And there's no nice catchy tune for this one, so that uh, that's also makes it worse. For these two up here, the identities go like this. You're going to write down the angles in the same order twice. So A, B, so we got A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. And then you're going to follow this convention. You're going to listen to this little chant, and this is what you write down. So it goes for this one. If you always write sine first and cosine second, it goes sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, sine. So sine of A times cosine of B plus cosine of A times sine of B. So that was sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Cosine of A times cosine of B minus sine of A times sine of B. So it's sort of like that catchy, catchy little phrase that I said. If you write down sine of A plus B and cosine of A plus B, and then you write down the angles twice over in the right order, A and then B, and then you say this out loud or in your head. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, sine. Okay, it's like a like a cheerleading chant. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, sine. It's just a little mnemonic to help you remember that. So sine of A, cosine of B, cosine of A, sine of B, sine of A, cosine of B, minus sine of A, sine of B. And that's the sum identities. For tangent, <clears throat> uh, this one, I think, is tangent of A plus tangent of B divided by 1 minus the product of tangent of A times tangent of B. And I'm going to look that up just to make sure I've got it because that's not one that I commonly use. Got it. OK. Um, there's the alternatives where you're subtracting an angle. So I'll write those in red. So if instead of having a plus sign, you have a minus sign, then everything that changes <clears throat> is as follows. This plus sign here turns this to a minus sign. This minus sign changes to a plus sign. Down here, this plus sign changes to a minus sign, and this minus sign changes to a plus sign. Okay. So you either have just the black signs in all of these, or you have just the red signs. All right, so these are three new identities that are, um, I don't know, still common, but less common in uh, the tangent one. They're, uh, they're, they're less simple, I should say. And I do several examples of actual computations with these in the, in the lecture. So let me just let me do one of these real quick. Um, tangent of 15 degrees. Can you give me the exact value of that? Well, 15 is not one of those common angles, right? So I, I doubt that you could give me the exact value of that. I do not. I do not. Uh, I don't think you could give me an approximation using a calculator. That's obvious, right? But an exact value. I don't know. But maybe we can write it like this. We can. That's tangent of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. And do you know the tangent of 45 and the tangent of 30? Yeah, because you've memorized all those things for the common angles. 
So this angle difference formula, so tangent of A minus B, says that we just take the tangent of 45, we subtract, so I'm using the red signs down here, we subtract the tangent of 30, and we divide that by 1 plus the product. Okay, tangent of 45 is 1, so that's easy. I'll go ahead and write those in. Tangent of 30, not as easy, but it's the sine of 30 divided by the cosine of 30. The sine of 30 is, I think I said this one wrong at one point in time, so I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Divide that by cosine of 30, which is root 3 over 2. What is that equal to? Overall, that is 1 divided by root 3, which is root 3 over 3. Okay, so we know that here, we know that here, and that's it. We've got our answer. The exact value is this. It's 1 minus root 3 over 3, divided by 1 plus root 3 over 3. And you could probably simplify this down a little bit more, but that's that's exactly what it is. To do that, you'd multiply by the um, you'd multiply on top and bottom. We've got no minutes left. Real quick, what you would do is you'd multiply by the conjugate of the denominator, which is exactly the numerator. gives you uh, 1 plus root 3 over uh, root 3 squared over 3 squared so 3 over 9 1 plus 1 third and then minus 2 root 3 over 3 divided by uh, 1 squared minus root 3 over 3 squared which is 1 third or 3 ninths Okay, and then you can rewrite this. Uh, this is 4 thirds. So this is 4 minus 2 root 3 thirds. I'm just doing some quick math real fast uh, to try and finish this out. So 3 thirds plus 1 third is 4 thirds. They have the same denominator now, so we can group this whole thing together in the top like that. And this is divided by 2 thirds. So now we multiply by the reciprocal on top and bottom. And what do we get? We get this is nothing. This cancels with that. And this cancels with this to give us a 1 and this to give us a 2. So it is literally 2 minus root 3. That's the exact form, the exact value of tangent of 15 degrees. Not obvious. <laughs> but these angle sums and differences allow you to make certain computations like this um, when before you couldn't. And it was much more important prior to the use of calculators and approximations like that. Um, still a worthwhile pursuit. These uh, identities for angle sums and differences are used in verifying other identities. So that's another thing that they can be used for. But with that, we're done for today. So. If there are any other questions, uh, please ask them here in the last remaining minutes. Um, again, I hope you had a, a wonderful May the 4th, and uh, I hope you can suffer through the revenge of the 5th. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see here. Quiz this Friday. It's the last one. <laughs> Homework on Monday. That's the last one. And then you got a final. That's it. You're almost done. You're almost there. Okay, it's been a great semester. This is the last class that I'll have with you all. Um, so thank you so much for everything. Uh, you guys have been a wonderful class. It's been very easy to, to work with you this semester. Um, I wish that we could have been in person for this, uh, but we will be in person next fall, which is great. Um, 
I, I just had my vaccine on Monday, my second one, and I was sick yesterday, but today I'm feeling like a million bucks. So, so let me, if you haven't gotten it yet, it's, uh, let me be a, you know, a little bit of hope. It doesn't, you know, you don't feel sick forever. You, you get better soon. And then the better thing is that you're, is that you're more protected and you can protect the other ones that you love. So, so, uh, if you haven't been vaccinated, consider it. Um, but I will see you. I don't know when, you know, sometime, but have a great summer. Uh, if you have any questions, just email me. Um, I'm, I'm willing to meet with you during finals week if you need to, but again, that's Saturday, I'll be on the road. So that's not possible. Okay. So sounds like I might need to, uh, sounds like I might need to get out of here and handle something upstairs. So I will talk to you later. Have a great summer. Okay. And, uh, you're welcome. Thank you. If you haven't filled out the, um, the, uh, the, the, the review, please do with all of your positive, negative, and meh comments. I really appreciate that. Helps me uh, sort of modify how I teach in the coming semesters if I need to. Okay, that's, that's one of the best ways for you to tell me how I should change. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll talk to you all later.